Hello everyone, I am excited to bring you this video today in which I'm going to be playing through a tutorial for the Underground Duchy because the Underworld expansion has just arrived as of a few hours ago on the Root Digital app and uh, I'm very excited because the first videos I ever did for this channel were playing through tutorials for the base factions and Riverfolk factions and so I'm excited to return to that and um, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to purchase these underworld factions I hope this is helpful for you this is not a strategy guide I'm just gonna be playing through the tutorial I might talk about some light strategy things but it, that's not gonna be what the purpose of the video is welcome to the underground duchy a vast underground empire that seeks total domination of the woodlands Together we will strike from below using our vast tunnel system, then sway the lower crust of society to our side, accessing new powerful abilities. You got a little 1v1 against the cats here. Very nice. Getting the recruiter set up. Aha! Got the advanced setup. No, never mind. I saw the two and I was like, oh, advanced setup cats. It's not. It's two, uh, two moles. To start, we get a tunnel in the corner clearing opposite the Marquis Keep. We also get two warriors in this clearing and each adjacent one. During Birdsong, we place one mole warrior in a clearing called the Burrow that can't be entered by your opponents. The Burrow is adjacent to all of your tunnels on that map and can be used to stage attacks across enemy lines. It should also be noted that this burrow does not have a suit. In daylight, we may take up to two of the following actions. Build, recruit, dig, move, and battle. And then over the course of the game, we will accrue more actions by swaying those ministers that were being mentioned earlier. First, let's recruit to get another mole warrior in our burrow. Alrighty. So am I not able to fully zoom out? Okay. Oh, they want us to build right away. Okay, sure. We got to build and clearing with our tunnel. Let me see. Is oh, they don't all have the interesting. I thought they were all going to have those um, goggles, but <laughs> I guess they only have the goggles when they're in the burrow, or maybe it's it's random. Like the eerie can be different colors. Oh yeah, there's a guy with this transition. They're not goggles, they're transition lenses over here. So I guess it's random. He's got a hat, he's got lenses. As part of the cost to build, you must reveal a card matching the suit of the clearing you have selected. Each card can only be revealed once each turn. So let's go ahead and reveal the favor of the rabbits so that we're able to build. Next, we choose which type of building we want. The Citadel is a good choice since it increases the warriors we recruit to our burrow each turn. Go ahead and pop that Citadel in. I'm going to see what it looks like real quick. Along with the tunnel. Very nice. In evening, revealed bird suited cards are discarded. We revealed a rabbit suited card so it returns to our hand to be used later. So yeah, uh, like the lizards, we actually prefer not to have bird cards for our actions and for our swaying because we'll have to discard those bird cards. Now we get to craft using the suits of the clearings our buildings are in. Note that tunnels are tokens and not buildings so they won't contribute during crafting. Your citadel building in the rabbit clearing will allow you to craft travel gear, right, because it costs one rabbit and we have one rabbit suited crafting piece being that citadel so we can craft the boot for one point. Finally, we draw a card and pass the turn to our whiskered opponents. Okay, gonna go ahead and pick up mouse and a sack. Um, is it really not gonna let me zoom all the way out? Kind of a shame, I, I would like to do that. I don't know if that's like just a tutorial thing or what. Okay, during Birdsong, you add one warrior to the burrow. Thanks to the Citadel that we built last turn, you get an extra warrior for a total of two. Your feline foe has left a building exposed in a mouse clearing to the west. 
This is ripe for an attack from our burrow. Dig a tunnel in that clearing to send your mole warriors there for an attack. To pay the cost of a dig, you must discard a card matching the clearing where you dug the tunnel. So we want to go to mouse, so we spend a mouse card. When a tunnel is placed, you may move up to four warriors there from your burrow. We're going to move all four to begin our assault. Oh, do they, do they come out of the tunnel? Oh, that's awesome. Once the tunnel is on the map, you may also freely move warriors between it and the burrow with the move action. With your warriors in place, it's time to show the Marquise no clearing is safe from the underground duchy. I'm so used to it being able to fully zoom out. All right, let me go ahead and battle. Get to see the moles in action in a battle for the first time. Those moles came out of nowhere. I thought they were supposed to be the blind ones. Very funny, cats, but I'll be taking both of your buildings. I like their little travel packs as well. Okay. Cat's going to build a sawmill. And recruit and move back to the keep. So they they saw us take out their undefended buildings and said, you know what, let's leave another building undefended. Our plan requires that we secure more rabbit clearings. Move two warriors to a rabbit clearing held by your enemies, then battle there. Oh, okay. Why though? We can just we can just secure it without we can just secure it without battling. We already rule here now. If we battle, we risk getting ambushed. Not that they would for one cat, but a bit of an unnecessary risk. It is the tutorial, of course, but I can't help it. Oh, did his glasses fall off? That's so sad. We can now sway powerful ministers to our side, scoring victory points and increasing the actions at our disposal. Yeah, if we wanted to do it for sway, that we don't even need to rule, we just need to have a mole there. Ministers come in three ranks, squire, noble, and lord. Higher ranks require you to reveal more cards to pay their cost, but are worth more victory points and have more powerful abilities. Let's sway the brigadier to increase our movement and battle prowess on future turns. You know, I didn't expect them to have us sway the best initial sway for the moles, uh, but I respect it. To sway a minister, you must reveal a number of cards from your hand equal to the minister's rank. Two for squire, three for noble, four for lord. However, you can only reveal cards matching clearings where you have pieces, and each of those clearings lets you reveal only one card. So we'll reveal this matching our rabbit clearing, we'll reveal this matching our other rabbit clearing, and then that bird card matches any of the other ones, but we will have to be discarding it. You score two points for playing Brigadier because it is a noble, and remove one of the three noble crowns from your inventory. Once you are out of noble crowns, you will no longer be able to sway more noble ministers. So we can see here we have two crowns remaining. I like this um, this uh, board layout. Close that. Two points for Brigadier. And we draw our one card. Ah, I keep trying to zoom out, I'm sorry. Cat's going to overwork and build a recruiter. Okay. And then they're going to recruit and they're going to pass it back to the moles. Going to recruit twice to our burrow. Feeling hungry for cards? It's time to build a market. This building will increase the amount of cards we draw in evening. Go ahead and build. Okay, it's making us build here. We'll go ahead and take that market. Take a look at that guy. There's a little tiny guy in there. Adorable. Our economy is booming, but so is the Marquise. Um, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one, formal. Uh, dig a hole near their wood source and shut it down with force. Alright, it is literally their only sawmill. So I don't know if I'd call it booming. But uh, here we go. I keep, I keep trying to do that. Good thing they take forever to come out of the tunnels. After your initial actions are complete, you may use the power of your swayed ministers. Activate Brigadier to battle into the clearing you tunneled into. So we get to battle twice. 
with Brig, Bridget, and we'll go ahead and take the first one here. Every time that, I'm also not used to having this on, I have the quick battle turned on, so every time I see that, those dice pause a bit before rolling, I'm expecting an ambush card to be played. Your opponent is defenseless, battle again to take out what remains of their settlement. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. I guess it's a 1v1, but still, I feel bad doing this to the poor cats. <laughs> Alright, we'll get those three points. Because you only have Bake Sale left in hand, you don't have enough cards to sway a minister this turn. Time to pass to the Marquise and draw for the turn. Yeah, I like to try and sway every turn. I think that's just... Um, I wouldn't say it's advisable like in every situation, but especially for like the first few, several turns, I'm trying to sway every every turn I can. Get those actions up. Uh-oh. You take a building, we take a building. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Oh, no, his helmet came off too. He. Oh, but he was so cute in there. Oh no, we were so focused on aggression that we forgot to protect our market and must suffer the price of failure. You were so focused on aggression, Formal. I did not want to go along with your plan. When a duchy building is removed, you lose your highest rank swayed minister and discard a random card from your hand. Goodbye, Ambush. Goodbye, Brig. We'll miss you. We may have lost the battle, but this war isn't over. Sway ministers, craft items, and attack enemy buildings to score 15 victory points and complete this scenario. Okay, let's do it. So, we've got coins. That's gonna let us... That's gonna let us craft for... How many points? Three. And then we can also sway a squire this turn for a point. Um, we could... Uh, Hmm. What? I'm tr I'm sitting here already trying to get to 15 victory points as fast as possible. I guess I should, um, before doing that, just take a quick look through these uh, ministers that weren't explored as part of the tutorial. We have Squire, uh, Formal, sorry, who is a Squire. You can reveal any card to place a citadel or mark it in any clearing, matching or not, that you rule. So Formal is really nice because you don't need a, a matching card. It makes your building on the turn you're swaying a lot more flexible. Uh, Captain allows you to initiate a battle. Uh, Marshal allows you to take a move. Brigadier, which we just had, lets us take up to two moves or initiate up to two battles. They do have to be one right after the other, though. Banker lets us spend any number of cards of the same suit to score an equal amount of victory points. This one is a bit tricky because we really want those cards for our sways and actions, so we got to balance what we're discarding along with that, and so Banker is usually a more of an end game closing out type of sway. And then we got Mayor, which allows us to take the action of any swayed noble or squire. So Mayor Brig is very powerful. Mayor Banker is also a nice way to close out the game, so these nobles are really going to be the core of our actions because you'll see here that the lords are, are going to be about scoring points for getting our buildings and tokens on the map. They're sort of win more type of, of uh, ministers. So the Duchess of Mud allows us to score two points if all tunnels are on the map. The Baron of Dirt allows us to score one point per market on the map. And the Earl of Stone allows us to score one point per citadel on the map. And you can see here that our next two citadels will give us more mole recruitment than our first one. And each market gives us one additional card draw. And yeah, so that's everything on the board. And let's just go into it. I think the quickest way for us to find success here is just going to be to build here. Going to go ahead and say, let's do a market, get those cards. And then gonna go ahead and do 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 do, do 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 we'll recruit one why not then we will sway ministers let's get marshall just automatically reveals those two that's nice uh and then we'll go ahead and craft this protection racket for three points worth of coins 
Now, if we don't lose a building on this turn, we will just be able to close out the tutorial next turn by crafting coins. Just giving us a solid idea of all the actions and capabilities that we have as the underground duchy. I the moles are really interesting. They're a very powerful flat fa powerful faction. Sorry, they're a very powerful faction, and a lot of that comes from their flexibility, right? They're very strong crafters. They have lots of actions available to them. Um, that that strong crafting usually doesn't come into play until the later part of a game, but when it comes into play. It's, it's a critical part of their game plan. And so, I'm a big fan of the moles. Um, they are very strong, so some people dislike them for that reason, uh, which I get. Um, but yeah, we, we don't really have anything left to do in this uh, tutorial here, so I think we're just going to get some more moles in the burrow, have a little party. I learned recently that there used to be a mechanic where if you had too many moles in the burrow, they would starve. That's kind of grim. Um, oh, Marshall? No, we don't. We don't need Marshall. Uh, we'll do it for fun. We'll see them in action on their movement. Let's move one guy. I'll move him into here. This lovely fellow. And now we will sway the captain. Uh, let's reveal code breakers. Let's reveal command warren. Okay, we've swayed our one minister for the turn. And because we have bake sale on hand, we're just going to be able to craft that for three points and close out the tutorial. So I hope that this was helpful for you if you uh, are watching this to gain a better understanding of how the faction works. And I will. Isn't the music supposed to change? It's been so long since I've listened to the music. Isn't the music supposed to change when you finish a game? Anyway, uh, look out for the tutorial on the Corvids, and then look out for some gameplay and some strategy discussion, uh, perhaps, in the future for these Underworld factions. I'll see you in the next one.